Richie Havens was undoubtedly one of the stars of the 60s. He exploded into the public consciousness with his on-the-spot rendition and composition of, of the song Freedom at Woodstock. And it was simply because the you know, the stage hands and everybody were having trouble getting it together sound-wise and production-wise and he could go out there with just his guitar and soothe the, the savages in the audience, those hippie freaks. And uh, he never really escaped. F freedom actually trapped him. He had to play it and sing it from that day on. And in this appearance from the March 3rd, 1991, episode of A&E Review, which was like their version of CBS Sunday Morning, and it was great. They had such good music on there. I mean, the, who puts the feelies on national TV? That program did. And here he discusses freedom and the open chord tunings that he uses on many, many songs and, and wrote freedom about. And he, he teaches the open chord right there on the show. And he's interviewed by Pete Fornatel, who uh, was one of the original FM DJs in New York. And uh, on this, this show, he was out promoting his new album called Now, and he does the song That's the Way I See You, which was written by Tim Moore. So enjoy this uh, now nearly 30-year-old clip of Woodstock legend Richie Havens. Our next guest, folk singer Richie Havens, is about to come out with a new album called Now. He's going to perform a song from that for us. He's best known for his particularly driving lyrical style, both with his own material and others. And he's also known, of course, for political involvement, starting out in Greenwich Village in the 60s, continuing today. We've asked a longtime friend of Havens, this jockey Pete Fornatel of New York's K Rock, to discuss with him a little history, a little technique. Pete. Thanks, Jack. Richie, Woodstock was over two decades ago now, and still you are so identified with that event and that time in our musical history. Has that made it difficult for you to be accepted as a contemporary artist in the 90s? Uh, not really. Um, it was, in fact, real history. Outside of this country, it's, it's real history. There was a change in America, and I think uh, in this country it was uh, not, not really played off as what it really was, even to this day. Uh, so there is still a curiosity out there, especially with a lot of young people. They want to know what happened. So to me, I'm in a new world, brand new world, brand new kids that have, don't know, really. So I'm really, in a, in a way, beginning all over again. The song that everybody remembers from Woodstock is Freedom, which mm -hmm. you got to sing again recently at mm -hmm. the uh, Nelson Mandela rally That's right. That's last right. year. Would you remind us of uh, how oh, that goes a little bit? See if I can... song and a concept that has retained its power over the years. One of the things we noticed in the Woodstock movie, in those close-ups of your guitar playing, was a very unconventional style. How and when did you learn to play like that? Oh, really back in, um, uh, really in the beginning. When I came from Brooklyn to Manhattan to Greenwich Village, I discovered folk music. There were a lot of songs that I really loved. I discovered a lot of people playing them too, like Dave Van Rock and all of those people. But I was a doo-wop singer, and, and these songs that I had discovered were songs I wanted to sing. So I used to chase these guys around, you know, Stephen Stills and Tim Horn. Teach me how to play guitar, you know. And they would tell me, come on, leave me alone. I'm passing the basket. I got to stay alive. You know? uh, you'll learn. And so I, I actually did. I tuned it to an open chord, which means uh, there's a conventional way of tuning a guitar, which uh, makes you use your fingers a certain way. But what I had done was I tuned it to an open chord, which allowed me to use a different actually one finger and sort of accomplish a great deal. Could you show our viewers? Well, sure.
It is a <laughs> style and sound that is uniquely your own, my friend. Thank you. Uh, Richie, you've written some great songs over the years, but you are known primarily as an interpreter of other people's work. Can you give us some idea of what it is that attracts you to a piece of material that you're likely to perform or record? Uh, uh, really the song. I think what the song says, and especially if it's a finished song, that's a kind of criteria that I kind of use with myself. Finished, I mean, it has a, a meaning that is, is, uh, has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It, it talks about something, tells you the conditions, and then tells you prob possibly what we can do to get out of these conditions, something that's finished. Would you do a song from the new album for sure, us? Sure, sure. Terrific. Here's Richie Havens performing the Tim Moore song, That's the Way I See You, from his upcoming album, Now. That's the way I see you. Oh, oh, oh. 